Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. The names of 45 bishops invited to the Synod on the Family were released by the Vatican this week. Now, these are not those elected by the respective bishops' conferences around the globe, but individual choices made by Pope Francis himself. That list of Synod Fathers is generating some controversy. On the list were some progressive stalwarts, Cardinal Walter Casper, Cardinal Godfrey De Niels, and Chicago Archbishop Blaise Supich, among others. What do the Pope's choices say about the potential direction of this synod? Joining us via satellite from Rome to discuss all of it and more is the Vatican correspondent for the National Catholic Register and author of the new book, The Rigging of a Vatican Synod, Edward Penton. Edward, thanks for being here. Good to be with you, Raymond. Now, I noticed at the top of this list of papal appointees to the Synod was the name Cardinal Angelo Sedano, one we haven't heard for some time, the former Secretary of State at the Vatican, and himself, his own reign was somewhat controversial. What do you read into that name being at the top of the list, and how is it being viewed in Rome? Yes, it's, it's rather interesting, isn't it? I think uh, part of it is because of his continued influence in the Curia. I mean, he's, although he's 87 years old, he still carries a lot of weight and he's, he's very well connected. And, you know, if you want to get something done, I think you still need Cardinal Sedano's help um, in the Curia because he is so well mm. connected, especially with, not only, only with the diplomats, but also other Curia officials. So I think that's, uh, that's part of it. But, um, but yeah, I, and, uh, but somebody said, you know, he's got really no not really much expertise in family and marriage issues, so um, it might have been better to have somebody uh, with real expertise there, perhaps a Bishop Emeritus who's got backing, you know, background in that. But, uh, but anyway, that, that he is there and he's top of the list, so I think that shows he's quite influential in this. Well, he's not the only 80-year-old on the list. As we mentioned in the intro, Walter Casper is over 80. Uh, Cardinal Deniels is over 80. You have uh, Pope Francis's confidant, Cardinal Maradiaga, on this list. Uh, how do you read mm -hmm. the inclusion of these individuals? And does this tell us about the general direction we can expect from this synod? Yes, it's, um, I think it's interesting. Uh, I think the, the fact that uh, they're all of that sort of, uh, they're, they're sort of very interested in, in pushing that sort of pastoral innovation uh, side of things. And I think um, clearly the, the Holy Father wants to, to get this out there and put in a very sort of front and center of this synod, much as this happened in the last synod. Um, but, uh, but yes, but there are also conservative or so-called conservative uh, Cardinals mm -hmm. uh, and bishops on that list as well. Um, there's Cardinal Napier, of course, yes. uh, from uh, South Africa, who's who's sort of really leading the African Church in this in this synod. Who are really sort of resisting all these innovations and this this sort of uh, mm. yeah, uh, some would say sort of a modernist sort of pushing uh, pushing the, trying to get the church to adapt itself really pastorally to to mm -hmm. today's uh, complex situations in the family. But, um, but there are others too, and there's, there's a, the Pope has chosen three, Afri three Africans as well, Cardinal Cafara as well from Bologna, yes. who's, who's considered uh, to be very uh, strong on family issues. In fact, he was the founding president of the John Paul II Institute. So it's, there's a, there's, mm -hmm. there is a mix, but I'd say probably 80% of, of the candidates are, are pushing this, this, uh, this agenda of, of pastoral innovation. 80% of those on the Pope's special invitee list you would consider more progressive? Yes, certainly sympathetic, um, I would say. Uh, yeah, I would, I, would, I would say that, yeah. So I guess the big question is, are we looking at another rigged synod? I ask the author of the book, The Rigging of a Vatican Synod. Well, possibly, Raymond. I'm looking at face value. That's what it, it would seem. But I think it's important to remember with this synod that it's not, you know, it's not a Vatican Council. It's not. Um, it's got no canonical authority in a sense. It's just a consultative mm -hmm. body for the Pope. So it's not going to. It's not going to sort of legislate um, really in any way. And, th and there is talk there won't be an apostolic exhaltation at the end of it. So. You know, I think I think one can overdo the significance of this, and just really, it it is just um, a synod, which is as, as I said, a consultative body. So 
Um, mm -hmm. I think that's worth bearing well, in mind. But when you have the Pope saying, I, I, I want a consultative church, I want a collegial church, it may mean something. I want to move on. Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, who is the head of the mm -hmm. Congregation for the Doctrine for Faith, uh, he has come out with a statement in Regensburg and he's warning about the German church taking the lead, he himself being a German. And he's concerned that perhaps the Germans are setting a pace for the church and he thinks, he warns, that this could lead to schism. Tell me about this and how that's being received at the Holy See. Well, I think this is uh, kind of a strategic move by Cardinal Muller because I think he's concerned and many are concerned about this push by the German church. And I think it's sort of, in a sense, getting out of hand. I mean, I've, I found out today uh, that uh, on the German bishops funded website called Katholisches, it's, uh, it's funded by the German bishops, they put out mm -hmm. a kind of ap apologia for same-sex marriage. And in fact, that website is, is loaded with this sort of thing. And this is coming from the German bishops, it is basically their, their, their organ. So, you know, the, I think there is concern that if they continue with this, then there is, you know, it could lead to schism. And, and I think they're, you know, I think Cardinal Muller is just voicing the, the concern of many people and basically firing a, a shot across the bowels of the German bishops saying, you know, stand back and, and be careful because people are getting very upset. Edward, there are some reports that Cardinal Muller has been marginalized and uh, that his congregation really isn't consulted on so many of these decisions. What happens? What are you seeing on the ground? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm hearing, Raymond, that, that he is kind of isolated. They're not uh, consulting him as they were uh, his predecessors. Um, for just one example was the annulment reform of last week. Um, right. which apparently, I mean, an Italian newspaper said that he didn't see the motu proprio until, uh, until it, the day it was published. Um, so it, that really gives a clue to just how much he's not being consulted on, on big things. I mean, that was a major thing, um, if that's true, of course. I mean, I did speak to officials, and they're kind of playing it down, and they're saying, you know, we're just getting on with the mm -hmm. job and so forth. But, uh, but then they always do, because they don't want to be sort of seen at odds with any uh, papal... Uh, you know, decision making and so forth. So, so Some, I mean, make of it I, I wanna, what you will, but I, I, it does seem to be isolated. Yeah. I, I want to move on to the Holy Father's visit to Cuba. We're going to see that this weekend. And then, of course, his big visit to the United States, much anticipated. First of all, why the addition of the Cuban preamble to the American visit? What is the Holy See? What is the Pope trying to convey through that? Well, I think, uh, it's, I think it's partly to give a message both to Cuba and to the United States that, that you know, that there, is, there can be reconciliation and that there is a, a way forward. And, and this is, of course, as, as viewers will know, was brokered by the, by the Holy Father, this, this, re, uh, this uh, re, redefining uh, diplomatic ties between uh, the two states. So this is, uh, I think, part of the message he wants to get across. Um, and I think going to Cuba first is a kind of sign also to the United States to say, look, uh, this, this is the way forward. Um, and then, uh, of course, he goes to the United States. But I, I do think that's, that's key to it. Cardinal Parolin, the Secretary of State, uh, has said immigration is going to be a major part of this United States swing. Of course, anyone could look at the schedule of events and see there, there are tons of immigration events with migrants and immigrants new to the country that the Pope will be highlighting, meeting with uh, throughout the visit. What else do you expect to hear and what do you think we'll be seeing from the Pope while he's here on American soil? Uh, well, I think he's going to be very careful, Raymond, because I think that these are two big set pieces he's going to give speeches to, as, as viewers will know. There's Congress in the United Nations. Congress, of course, um, it's, it's, it's coming up for an election, so he's going to be very careful. But I think he's going to stress all of these issues of immigration and, and uh, poverty. And also, he's going to be critical, I've heard, of economic systems, not capitalism per se, but, uh, but just the system which he thinks is very unjust. Um, so these are going to be said, but very, as I say, very carefully, because also at the UN, for the first time, you've got a Pope speaking at the opening of the UN General Assembly, where you've got all the different world leaders there. This is the first time that a Pope's spoken to such a sort of captive audience. So he's got to be very careful there as well. Um, 
But I think he's going to also uphold uh, the church's teaching on life issues as well. I think there's some concern that he might not because of the Vatican, the Holy See support for the Sustainable Development Goals, which, which include um, talk about reproductive health and so forth. But I think right. the Vatican's very keen to point out that this is going to be re re reasserted, the church's teaching, as it is in his encyclical Laudato Si as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Edward, my theory is that this is all a preview, a setup for the Synod on the Family. This entire swing through Cuba, the United States, and of course uh, ending with that major meeting of world families. How, in, in what way do you think this visit might propel the Pope's vision for the Synod and allow the world to go with all of us as we turn our attention to Rome? I think you could be right there, Raymond. I think the, obviously the message of mercy is going to be central to this whole visit as it, as it has been um, for his previous ones. I mean, I think with a Jubilee year coming up as well, I think he's going to be very keen to get this message out there. Um, and of course that's central to the Synod as well because uh, mm -hmm. as viewers know, that, that is key to a lot of the propositions that, that were put forward at the last Senate. So, so yeah, I think it will set the stage, but I don't think he's going to push any particular proposals. I think he's just going to sort of set the stage and set the tone for the Synod through this visit. I think you're probably right with that. Very good. Edward Penton, thank you for being here. The Rigging of a Vatican Synod, the new e-book by Edward Penton, is available online now from Ignatius Press and on Amazon.com and at Ignatius.com. Thanks again, Edward.